sponsored by JMR Rentals, professional digital cinema and broadcast equipment rentals in Brooklyn, New York. JMRNY.com. Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend. I'm Jason Godby and joining me today via Zoom, he is the writer-director of the new indie feature Mother May I, Mr. Lawrence Vandicelli. Hey, welcome Lawrence. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, we were trying to get together with you guys here in New York and then, uh, you know, a big bomb was dropped on the industry, so I appreciate you fitting us into your schedule uh, and it's great to, to get you on the show and talk about this film, which there is a lot to talk about, I think, in this movie. Uh, but first, I want to talk to you a little bit about you. Uh, how did you uh, get into this whole uh, crazy business of show, and uh, what's your origin story? I was a weird uh, little arty kid, and I liked drawing and, and then photography. And that eventually, in a weird way, led me to wanting to make movies. But it, it came from just being a weird kid and wanting to express myself. and So I want to talk to you about this film. Uh, there's a lot to it, but uh, before we get like, you know, into the weeds, can you just give us kind of an overview? Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what happens in the movie. Give us a little synopsis. This should be the easiest question for me to answer. And yet I'm, uh, you know, I was basically, it's about a, a couple um, who are uh, in the family planning stages of, of their relationship. And the man inherits his deceased mother's house. And he was estranged from her. He didn't know her uh, at all. And the uh, woman, his partner, wants him to confront that, feels like he's being avoided. So they uh, do some alternative sort of therapy uh, practices to try to get at the deeper issues between them and that he's dealing with. Uh, and then I guess hijinks ensue from there. I don't know how, how much how much I should get into. You tell me if I should give more than that. So I, I thought there were some interesting themes going on in this movie. I mean, an alternative title could have been like Mommy Issues or, you know, um, and uh, I was thinking it's very Oedipal in some ways. And I thought, you know, maybe this came out of some therapy sessions that you've had kind of thing. I developed a story with, with my wife. She wasn't my wife at the time. She's not my wife. And I think we were really interested in the ideas of um, what is the baggage that we take into a relationship and can two people get past that baggage in order to actually form a bond? And is it better to accept your partner or conversely, should we be trying to change ourselves and better ourselves to be someone else for our partner? So the sort of specifics of the relationship and it, the, the mother issues were in a lot of ways just a... Um, just a vehicle in order to sort of look at, you know, what in some crazy way, this is what is the nature of love and, and how do we, how do we exist? Most of us are, are incredibly fucked up. So how do we, uh, how do we live together and, and be good to each other is, is basically what the movie's about in our minds. It's definitely, it's a character piece. You know, it's a very intimate movie. And one thing I was really curious about in terms of how it came together, you've got, uh, Holland Roden and and Kyle uh, Gallner in this film. How did you got? How did you get them? How did you? What was the casting process? Was this something that was written for them? Like, how did you get them involved? Yeah, I mean, the the big steal for us really was was them. I mean, that we a movie of our size should not have have gotten them, uh, and so we're we're just you know we're just so incredibly grateful to get to work with both of them. And um, Holland came on first. She came on very early. Uh, I went to, she was living in this amazing uh, van in Topanga Canyon. And I went and visited her and our dogs hung out. We went for walks and that basically kicked off a really creative um, collaboration where we, we talked a lot about the character and how we could develop. I mean, she plays two basic, basically two characters and how we could develop those together. So she was a real, really incredible partner um, creatively very early on. And then she suggested that we reach out to Kyle um, and Kyle read the script and we, we met and it, very similar, just loved working with both of them so much. Um, 
they're very different uh, in a lot of ways. And that somehow the differences just all came together and we just had a, a really wonderful working relationship throughout the whole process. You're dealing with these people and there's this very like intimate moments between the two of them. How are you kind of negotiating that? And, and how was that like, well, first of all, like talk about a little bit about the making of the film. Cause you're like, you look like you're in a pretty remote location. It's a very horror movie, you know, kind of situation. How, how were you kind of able to, you know, how many days of shooting are we talking for this thing? And how, what was the process like? The intimacy was, I think the biggest goal, it, basically I, I felt, we all felt if we didn't believe these two people that they loved each other, the movie wouldn't work because if we're not invested in them as a, as a couple and we don't see that love from the beginning, we're, we're not going to care whether they figure things out or not. So um, Holland went and, and visited Kyle at home. He's living in Vermont at the time, just to sort of um, have more of an off-screen, you know, understanding of each other and how they work. And then we spent about a week together. Uh, we shot in upstate New York. So just cooking, hanging out, going for walks, looking at nature. We just we just tried to spend a lot of time kind of casually, uh, just so we all knew each other better. And then really, um, I really can't take any credit. I mean, they they, they put in the work and, and they're just phenomenal. They, 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 they really put in the work with each other to, to have a really strong, trusting relationship. And I think that's but what shows on screen in my job was more to kind of get out of their way. Was there a different process in terms of working with Holland because she's sort of, you know, um, there's a question. I mean, it's in the it's it's in the sort of the the tagline and logline, so I'm not giving too much away. But she sort of throughout the course of the film sort of turns into Kyle's mother, and you're kind of wondering is she is this a, an elaborate sort of therapy technique? Is she being uh, devious or fiendish or you know or you know is she possessed by the spirit of this departed woman. Did you work differently with her on those days when she was sort of in the other character? Because it's kind of like working with Norman Bates a little bit. You know, it's like a little bit Anthony Perkins. Uh, was there like a different process when she was in that character as opposed to uh, playing Anya? That's really a great question. Um, it was, you know, every actor is different, obviously. Um, and so when you're collaborating with people, it's not like some sort of... Um, great uh, secret that you're going to work differently with every person so it was different it, it she was she had embodied this other character so much that it did really feel quite different um not in a strategic way just giving notes and working together felt quite different when she was um playing this sort of other other form uh, we did a lot of work in preparation to think of the ways that we could articulate the differences between the two characters so that the work could be more natural and come from something more um, circumstantial and intuitive as opposed to her having to sort of force it. So that was that was the work that we really did that was strategic that but that happened long before we were we were on set. And then um then yeah I mean it's it, it was really fun um it was really fun watching Kyle react and see how that played off Kyle. Um, these two completely different characters so so it was really it was really quite fun i must say uh, uh, it was a really fun process and the, the first day we showed up on set when holland was in the full i mean i don't know how much giveaway but you know when holland was was um, further along in, in 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 this process it was it was like oh wow it was really cool it was like she is a different human being and i think that's the um we said early on you know, we don't have the budget to do all sorts of crazy VFX stuff. And, but aside from budget, my personal preference for movies is I feel like actors have a superpower and that that was basically our special effects. The special effects was, can these actors transform in these ways? And watching that unfold to me is the thing that regular human beings cannot do. And so watching that happen in real time on set was so, so fun and, and just so impressive. Um, I mean, they, they both, you know, without giving much away, they both have these, these, these shifts that, that really, uh, 
yeah so you just watch a human being do that in real time and it's it's like watching someone do special effects in real life it's it's really cool as stephen king once said there's never a zipper up the monster's back when it's all in your imagination kind of thing and i think it is a very well acted piece i i mean i i think you know it's it's a shame i've actually talked to this i've actually talked to actors about this but it's a shame that a lot of these types of performances aren't really recognized all that much you know, but she, you know, she's knocking it out of the park and doing a really great job. Um, and you've seen that in genre movies lately more and more where somebody's just like, it, they get these great performances, but they never get recognized because they're not what, you know, people think of the great drama or something, you know, things like that. I mean, unfortunately, you know, the, I mean, whatever, we don't have to go into this side of things, but in terms of who gets nominated, there are whole marketing campaigns behind that, which is, you know, not necessarily a reflection of, of the performances that I really deserve. And I really, truly uh, couldn't be more proud of, of, of both of them in the work they did. And Chris Mulkey too. Chris Mulkey is, you know, he's not in, in as many scenes, but also is just so phenomenal and uh, so, so lovely to work with as well. One of the things that it's curious about it, because it's very psychological. How, what genre do you sort of, uh, what category do you feel this fits in the, the, the best? If you were to, like from a marketing perspective, you know, um, what, what would you say it is? I mean, I feel like this is a, a thorny question because there are people uh, who have very strong opinions about these classifications. And I totally respect it. And I um, I love those people because those are the people often who go and see movies and really promote the movies just in, just because they love them or hate them or whatever the reaction is. So I, you know, my personal opinion on what it is, I know may offend the sensibilities of people who who um, who may know more than me about these things. But I, um, I, you know, for marketing purposes, I don't think it's a horror movie personally. I I think that perhaps creates some of the some expectations that there's going to be a certain level of violence that doesn't happen in this film. Um, but from my, from my personal feeling in terms of what is horror, I personally find that what people do to each other and the depths of sort of darkness that, that humans are capable of, of going to and, and the actions they're capable of, of, of the ways that they're able to hurt each other is more horrific to me than a lot of the things that are traditionally classified as horror. So I would say that this is a supernatural thriller. That would be, I think, the most accurate classification in terms of marketing. Um, but in terms of the movies that I love from the past that I think are still considered horror movies, like Don't Look Now or these these types of movies that maybe today wouldn't be considered a horror movie as much, I, I think it's maybe more in that category. I mean, it's very hard to say what is and what isn't horror these days. And, you know, the, the that fan base is like so, like such a rabid fan base. And they, they really do support their stuff, but don't tell them what horror is kind of thing, <laughs> you know? I, I truly, I mean, I, I don't, um, I guess my approach on making things is, I'm more interested in figuring out what the thing is, what I'm making, and just trying to be true to whatever that is. And I think it's maybe easier to be derivative when you're making something. It's easier to say, I want to do something like that. And I really tried not to do that, I tried to make something unique and original. And as a result, maybe that makes it harder to classify, but it's still within a, you know, you're like, what, is this a supernatural thriller? Is it a straight horror? I, if people are arguing about this, then we've done well because it means people are watching the movie and they like the movie and they care about the way it's classified. So I, I fully support that that kind of engagement. So recently we covered Tribeca Film Festival and we covered a um, a movie called Somewhere Quiet, uh, which is I think a similar type of sort of character based horror thriller type thing. And I asked the director, you know, what makes a horror movie or like what makes a great horror movie what would you what to you what makes a great horror movie ultimately i mean i hope this doesn't sound pretentious but ultimately i think maybe it's two things one in the simplest way is i i care about people so if a horror movie is about people and if it's about the way people feel then i'm already i'm already in and i would say that what i love about horror is it takes things that are really difficult to talk about they're painful and um ugly and dark and it and it uses these things that kind of lifts them into a surface where we can engage with them and there's catharsis and there's some kind of collective um healing potentially through horror so my favorite horrors are ones that are unafraid to go 
into the darkness in ways that dramas um it doesn't always work as well because it's just it's just a harder thing to to go at, at sort of straightforward so that those are the movies I love, and I, I think that, I hope that that's what's happening. One of the things that she mentioned was like sort of a pending sense of dread. You know, that was one of the things. And this movie, I think, definitely has that. And one thing I wanted to, because I think it's, you know, I, I've always said that tone is like the hardest thing to establish in a film. Um, and you have this very creepy, uh, slow-moving, atmospheric kind of uh, sense of dread and uh, you know, the unexpected and how do you, what was kind of for you, what was the key to creating that element? Like, how do you create an atmosphere on film? I guess what's strange about directing is you are not actually creating anything. You are not the one that creates really a single thing. You don't perform it. You don't make the score. You don't shoot it. So what you're more doing is working with extremely talented, smart people and just kind of, you know, shifting things here and there to make sure it all lines up. So really the tone, I can't say there's any one thing. I mean, I wrote the script, um, but it's uh, it's people who are smarter than me and have this incredible skill, whatever, whether it's on the performance side or music or, or cinematography or anything, editing. I mean, I, I don't want to leave. I feel like anytime I say one person, I'm leaving someone else out. But really, I, I it is just sort of, riding the wave of all of this talent and just trying to make it kind of show up. And obviously you have to have um, something very intentional in your mind as you're going, but I try to also be very open to what gets created and just kind of finding that balance between uh, control and letting go constantly going back and forth. But I agree, I think it's the hardest thing to pull off because everything has to cohere. It's very hard to predict in advance what it's actually gonna feel like when you're on set. And, um, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time it doesn't come together and it, that's really scary when you're on set, you know, like, is this going to all come together on, on the, specifically with tone? I mean, that it's, it's terrifying. I, mean, I don't know if you're giving yourself enough credit when you say you don't create anything. I mean, you, as a director, you are guiding all of those people in a, and giving them a direction of like what you want and they're giving it to you. And then you're sort of correcting them along the way. Um, the score in particular, I think, is is definitely well used here. I don't know, but it, it, it's it's one of those things. It's like, um, you know, they say that uh, human beings have sort of a sixth sense. They can feel the vibrations between people when they walk into a room, if there's just been an argument or something. And I feel like that's the kind of sense here. Like if you were if you were in and amongst these people and you walked into that living room and saw them, you, you would immediately feel tension. So I think, you know, it comes from the acting, but you know, I think you're doing, I think, you know, maybe you're giving, you're being a little bit modest and, and not giving yourself enough credit, but um, was there, was there a sense of like, this is the way the movie has to feel or was it like, you know, were you, was the direction in terms of not just with the acting, but the score and the editing, were you saying this is the way I want the movie to feel or was that the way the movie did it kind of turn out that way because of all those elements? I mean, the thing we had to balance in this movie is we're dealing with, with really heavy interpersonal issues, uh, trauma and all of these things trying to be respectful, but we're also using genre to go on that journey. So it's the balance of, I think there are certain expectations that we have from things as simple as, oh, that house is in a remote location, create certain expectations. So the thing that we were constantly trying to do was to weave those expectations in, in order to tell this story about these two people and what they're going through. And that goes across the board. That was with the score, like the score has a, you know, there's a lot of Bernard Herrmann in that score. And that creates a certain sense of feeling and expectation that people have when they watch it. But if you just do that because you like it, it doesn't necessarily tell the story you're telling. So we had to kind of constantly check ourselves and say, are we telling this story, even though these are the things we like? So what can we grow upon? What can we build upon from the things, these references? And where are we maybe just kind of indulging our, our the things that we're interested in, but don't necessarily tell this story? I think I guess that's maybe the answer to your to your previous question about what are the things that's going through your head as you're making these decisions. Yeah, I think you did a, a, some screenings of it already, 
And by the time this comes out, it'll have been out in theaters and on VOD and so forth, so forth. Like I said, we were talking about the horror fan base and so forth, and they can be um, they can be very fervent and enthusiastic, but they can also be very finicky. What do you want to give audiences that they haven't seen before with this film? When we created this film, my hope was to kind of do two things, which is to give to honor the horror genre and to say that we can make a whether we call it horror or thriller. We can we can make a movie in this category that's sophisticated. It's for grown-ups. It can it can deal with real themes. There's no reason to talk down to people because they like horror movies. They're just as sophisticated as people who watch other kinds of movies. So trying to create a sophisticated, meaningful movie in this genre was primary. And then secondary, I guess, was we got this great quote from Forbes, um, which I, I can't remember verbatim, but basically says. This movie shows why it's a mistake to dismiss the horror genre when you're looking at what is a meaningful film. So I guess my hope would be that we could pull people in who maybe look away when they see a horror film because they assume it's going to have certain sort of maybe, I don't know, be frivolous or something. And just say, no, actually, there is so much meaningful. This film is not the first meaningful horror film by any stretch. There's a long lineage of that. But it's trying to do both of those things. And I hope uh, that's the way people see it. You know? It's funny, you talked about you know not having a big VFX budget and, and things like that, but this film, I think, benefits because of that and might have been done a disservice if you, ha- if you had had the budget everybody wanted. You know, uh, you, maybe you wouldn't, have, I don't know, maybe, do you agree with that? Do you think maybe you, you wouldn't have made uh, the same, I mean, you wouldn't have made the same movie. The, that we got the actors that we got in this movie to me says we didn't cut any corners I, this is not a movie that should have cost more money and we had to make the cheaper version of it this this is the movie we set out to make and it's about it's about these actors and these performances and these characters and what they're going through so we didn't need an extra dollar we, we would have been more comfortable as filmmakers but no one cares about that who's watching the movie but it's very important to me that people don't think that they're going to watch Oh, I'm gonna watch this cheap movie and see see if they could do. That's that's not what we made. We made a real movie, and the the proof of that is is the quality of the actors that are that are in the movie. So uh, I'm probably gonna wrap up in a minute, but um, you know, do you, what do you have? I know. Well, I mean, we're in the midst of uh, some strikes right now, which is putting the the industry on its head. But um, what do you, do you have? Another project that you're uh, currently getting off the ground, and and what can we expect to see from you next? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's pencils down until the strike is over. But the second the strike is done, I have um, I have two projects that are that are absolutely ready to go. Um, one is more of a i guess more of a straightforward horror and then the other one is i guess maybe in this category in this world that that will allow people to argue about uh, how to classify it um and that one one is set in italy and one is set in uh, 1970s new york fantastic i'm definitely down for both i I would you know i love italy and i love uh, 1970s era new york i'm gonna wrap up but if people want to know more about you your work and where to find the film where can they find you online? Me online? I'm, I'm a pretty private person in terms of my online uh, persona, which is probably the worst answer I could give for this movie. But I would encourage people to rent the movie, um, which will be available on all the VOD platforms. It's going to have a limited theatrical as well, which if you can see in the theater, obviously always better. Um, and I would just say support support the, the actors in the movie. Uh, and, and look at the people who created it. We had an incredibly talented group of people and every one of them deserves your attention. That was terrific. Thank you so much. And uh, for the next movie, come back. We'd love to have you. Love to. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for such thoughtful questions. Thanks, Lawrence. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. For more of our content, including our movie reviews, visit our website, norestfortheweekendpodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, youtube.com slash getbehindtherabbit. I'd like to thank my guest, Lawrence Vanicelli, and our sponsor, JMR Rentals. For Behind the Rabbit Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.